Hey everyone, Tony from TN3D Studio. Today we are testing out Lightmix inside VBA 5 for SketchUp. VBA 5 for SketchUp has introduced many new features into the SketchUp platform, including the new light generator, VBA Vision, and the new redesigned frame buffer with built in post production tools. And all of this, of course, to improve your workflow across all stages of architectural visualization. So light mix, which is amongst one of the new features, is a render element that allows you to adjust your color and intensity of your light assets during and post rendering. So V-Ray separates all of your light assets to separate adjustable channels and this of course gives you endless possibilities to create different lighting scenarios with one single rendering. Now in this model, I have different types of lights that I've renamed based on location or role in the scene. And this is important so you can easily identify them when you're ready to adjust inside light mix. I've also kept the color temperatures to white as a default because it's easier to change from a white color into other colors instead of working the other way around. As for the intensity, you want to make sure you set some realistic values, nothing too overexposed or underexposed. And even though you can adjust these parameters later, it is still good practice to make sure the scene is properly exposed through your camera settings or other adjustments in your workflow. So let's add light mix as part of our render elements by right clicking on the element icon and finding light mix from the list. We then have four options for the arrangement of the lights inside light mix. You can select from individual lights, which means you will see each light object is stored in a separate channel, or you can select group instances, which means all the instances of a light are grouped and stored in a separate channel. And for both of these options, it should be really easy to identify your lights if you've named them appropriately. You can also select by layers, which means that all the lights on the same layer will be arranged into one channel or you can select the light ID option by assigning object ID to your light assets. So right click on any light in your viewport, head down to V-Ray object ID and set an object ID for that light. In doing so, lights that share the same ID will then share the same adjustable channel. One key benefit about this option is that you can add the object ID as part of your render element so that you can create a selection mask from your light assets. So those are your four options. Select the option that best complements your workflow and we should be just about ready to render. So here's where we get to have some fun. Remember that all of the adjustments that we're about to make now can also be done while the render is still in progress. So this is what light mix looks like and in the properties sections where it all happens. As you can see, all of my lights are arranged by name and compiled in this list. And for each light, you can adjust the intensity to multiply to increase or decrease the light intensity. You can also hold the Alt key and as you click or select, you'll be able to isolate any one light that you wish to adjust. To make color changes, you want to click on the color icon to access the color picker and make adjustments to the light color. This is a nice sub menu for very quick color presets and again it's a very small details that make the process a little bit easier. But seriously the entire redesign of the frame buffer alone is already very impressive. Once you're happy with the color combinations, you have the option to save and load any of your presets. As well, all of your previously used presets will be located in this drop down menu for easy access. And if you feel like starting over and reset back to the default render, just hit this reset button to undo all of the adjustments you just made. If you look further down, you will see two options, one to transfer the light mix settings to the scene and the other to convert them to a composite. And once you convert them to a composite, all of your channels are converted into editable layers for non-destructive post-production. 
and now you can easily duplicate, add adjustment layers and switch between blending modes to each of your light channels. It really feels like Photoshop just moved in, the fact that you can make all of these edits without leaving the frame buffer. Also the interactive experience is really simple and this feature really lends itself to allow you to be as creative as you want. And without making this video any more longer than it needs to be, that is all for this tutorial. Hopefully I've shown you how to effectively use light mix inside V-Ray 5 for SketchUp. Keep in mind this is still the beta version, so it's not 100% functional. Remember that this is one of many features available in V-Ray 5 beta version, which you can sign up for in the Chaos Group websites. So any links to the beta and additional resources will be in the description below. As always, I want to thank you for taking the time like the video, share and subscribe because it really helps with the growth of the channel. And leave down in the comments section what you think of the V-Ray 5 light mix or any of the features that I should cover next. And with that being said, I'll see you guys next time.